ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. Good evening, uh, Arlington. This is the Arlington School Committee. Today is Thursday, May 23rd, 2004. It is 6.32 p.m. for our regular second meeting of the month of May. And uh, we are on Zoom. We have a member who is um, uh, coming in remotely, Dr. Allison Ampey. So for the sake of uh, appropriate regulations, uh, please uh, confirm that you can hear us and we can hear you. I can hear you. And we can hear you. Uh, so because we're on Zoom, anything you say may be recorded and put into cyberspace and be a part of the meeting. Meeting is recorded and broadcast on ACMI for the next 30 seconds or so because we're about to hit executive session for a joyous, joyous reason. The attendees who are not participants uh, attending via Zoom will need to leave this meeting now and rejoin after our executive session. To do this, we need you to follow the process. And I think everybody's out, but I'll read it anyway. All attendees who are not participants need to leave the meeting. They need to log out rather than have being removed so you'll be able to get back in when we're out of executive session. Um, after all attendees log out, we will lock the meeting so we can begin the executive session. When the executive session is over, we will unlock the meeting and readmit any of the attendees who are waiting to be let into the meeting, plus any new people who want to join us. Um, we cannot use breakout rooms for this meeting, unfortunately. That's, I don't see why we'd want to, but uh, we can't set that up. So we need to work on breakout rooms for the future if that's what we want to do. So we now have on the agenda an executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining and litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the public body and the chair so declares. And the chair is declaring that we are going into executive session for the purpose of AEA Unit A negotiations. On a motion by? So moved. Uh, Ms. Exton is seconded by? Mr. Thielman uh, to go into executive session roll call. Dr. Allison Ampey? Yes. Uh, Ms. Exton? Yes. Mr. Cardin? Yes. Mr. Thielman? Yes. Ms. Gittleson? Yes. Ms. Morgan? Yes. Chair votes in the affirmative. We are now in executive session. Okay. We are back. It is now 6.40 on a beautiful Thursday evening here at the Arlington School Committee room. We have emerged from executive session. And what we're going to do now is we're going to revote uh, the motion that was adopted in executive session. So the motion was to approve the successor agreement with the Arlington Education Association and authorize the chair to sign on the committee's behalf. Motion by Ms. Morgan. So moved. Second by Ms. Gittleson. Second. It, this works so well. Uh, <laughs> and we have a roll call vote. Uh, if, by the way, anyone want to comment first? I'm sure we have comments. Yes, Mr. Mr. Cardin. Sure, thank you. Um, Dr. Allison, Ampey, and I uh, were the school committee representatives to, negotiating, to the negotiating team, and I want to thank the administration for all their work in putting together the proposals and running the crunching the numbers. And I also want to thank Ms. Keyes and her team for their very cooperative relationship and partnership in coming to a, a wonderful agreement to advance our town, our schools. Thank you. Dr. Allison Ampey, are, are you with us? Yeah, uh, do you, would you like to comment as a member of the negotiating team? Um, just, I echo what Mr. Cardin said and uh, especially thank the AEA for their willingness to listen and keep working through things that we didn't necessarily agree on and try to come to something that was a happier place for both of us. Um, I mean, for both both sides, uh, and also I want to thank Mr. Cardin because he did a lot of the work, especially near the beginning. So, thank you. One additional, sorry, one additional thing. I also want to thank the voters of the town of Arlington for passing the override that allowed us to make a substantial uh, increase in our compensation. Thanks. Thank you, Superintendent. 
Okay, I'm going to echo some thank yous, um, and I want to share a little bit about what we're so excited about with this agreement. So it is our pleasure tonight to share that we've reached an excellent agreement with the Arlington Teachers Association uh, following what I believe is a very collaborative and collegial negotiation process. Um, I also want to share appreciation for members of the bargaining team, Mr. Cardin, Dr. Allison Ampey, Dr. Ford Walker, Mr. Spiegel, Principal Amadi, and our legal counsel, counsel uh, Mr. Dominello, as well as members of our team who contributed to data collection and financial analysis that contributed to the bargaining process uh, for both teams. I also want to share my appreciation for our Arlington teachers, especially those who served on the bargaining team. Ms. Medeiros is here, Ms. Ferrante, and Ms. Keys, as well as all of the other members of the team, giving up their afternoons and evenings for the past few months to engage in rich and productive discussions about important issues for our teachers and students. I'm continually grateful um, and reminded about the steadfast focus our teachers have on the well being and success of our students. And as a result of our collective focus on improving the system for Arlington students, our discussions focused on issues important to the success of our strategic plan and a cohesive path forward to, for the Arlington Public Schools. I want to echo Mr. Cardin's thanks to the Arlington community whose votes in November made this agreement possible. Without that support, our schools and our students would suffer and the terms in this agreement absolutely would not have been possible. Um, this agreement also wouldn't have been possible without the careful planning, deliberation, and commitment to our students of members of the community, including the school committee, members of the finance committee, and town meeting. Um, this agreement is a really historic one. It includes compensation adjustments in year one and COLAs in year two and three that bring us to a competitive level of compensation with the town manager 12. It includes a parental leave package that makes us a leader in the Commonwealth, something we should be extremely proud of. It includes opportunities for mutual accountability when it comes to holding a high standard of instruction and service, particularly for our students who receive additional support in our schools. It includes an attendance incentive that allows staff to earn an additional uh, personal day with strong attendance for the unit and takes into account the need for teachers to attend to their personal and professional needs throughout the school year. And it includes a revised st structure for meeting time that expands our efforts to share leadership and responsibility for the effective functioning of our schools and it includes a whole lot of other adjustments as well that I'm sure the public will learn about um, in the days ahead. But most of all the agreement is a testament to how we do things here in Arlington and what makes Arlington really special. In Arlington our students come first and we know that well compensated and well treated human beings are better caregivers. In Arlington, we make commitments, we plan for them, and we deliver on our promises. Negotiations can be hard. We may not always agree about exactly how to go about achieving our goals, and we may see different paths towards the same North Star. But we find paths to collaboration and compromise because in Arlington, we know that our top priority is to create learning spaces where students can grow, belong, and find joy in their learning. And this agreement gets us one step closer to that vision, and we're very excited about it. So thank you all. That was beautifully written, and I can't say much more except that it's obvious the relationship between this committee, the administration, and our professional staff is what makes this possible, and the fact that we're able to go in and negotiate in the context of mutual respect, mutual understanding, and uh, mutual dedication to the same goals uh, has made this uh, a a successful negotiation process and I'm really grateful to our educators for all they do for our children and for how they partner with the, this community this committee and the administration in terms of bringing forth this agreement uh, any other um, comments qu uh, on this motion hearing none uh, roll call vote dr. Allison Ampey yes Ms. Exton yes Cardin? Yes. Mr. Thielman? Yes. Ms. Gittleson? Yes. Ms. Morgan? Yes. Chair votes in the affirmative. That's a unanimous 7 nothing vote. Congratulations to everyone. Okay. Um, yes. Um, <laughs> Julie Keyes, our AEA uh, president. Thank you. Um, I just want to say thank you to the people of Arlington, um, particularly for passing the override last fall, because that really is a historic step that I don't know of any other town that has said we will voluntarily raise our taxes to better compensate our educators. Um, and we want to work, people want to stay in Arlington because of 
the respect they get here. Um, so it's nice to, that they can feel they can afford to do so. Um, I want to thank the members of our team. Uh, besides Jenna Steve and I, we also had Elizabeth Higgins representing our elementary teachers, Masha Pandre representing our special educators, Noah Cabral representing our middle school teachers, and Erica Tonashell representing our high school teachers. Um, this is a process we began in September, and we've been meeting weekly since September with double meetings some of these last few weeks in April and May. So it has been a gauntlet. Um, it's been a lot of work. It's been a lot of number crunching. It's been a lot of info sessions and feedback sessions and surveying and sharing out of information with members. Um, but we are excited for some of the opportunities that are going to come from this new contract. We always say that teacher working conditions are student learning conditions, and we're excited to see some improvements in that, those areas. I also want to acknowledge that we have AEA reps uh, Sif Ferranti and Jenna Medeiros with it's, us tonight. It's Sieve, S, like, like Steve with a, without a V, or Sieve. without a T. Okay, Sieve. There you go. Okay, Sieve Ferranti. Yep. Uh, I've been saying it wrong for a couple of weeks now, so I thank you for the correction. And Jenna Medeiros, uh, would you like to say anything, either of you? I think Julie said it all, but I'll just echo uh, to thank you for everyone who participated in the process and especially for the voters in Arlington who um, provided the funds for this historic agreement. Yes, I'll just say thank you for the town of Arlington and the taxpayers for voting for the override because it wouldn't have been possible without the residents of Arlington. So we thank you all. I'm really proud of the way our community uh, stands with our teachers. And that uh, concludes that agenda item. We are now to public comment. And seeing that there's nobody signed up for public comment, we head on to the next agenda item. Uh, student representatives, we do not have any student representatives present. Uh, now we come to the summer programming report. Looks like summer is coming. Uh, Superintendent Homer. Sure, I'll hand it off to Dr. Ford Walker. I just want to note that um, typically we have the Deputy Superintendent and Assistant Superintendent of Student Services um, present this. We don't have Ms. Elmer with us right now. Hope she feels better soon. And uh, we will be, uh, Dr. Ford Walker will be speaking to those slides. And then if there are questions, follow up questions, please do send them to uh, Ms. Elmer and CC me. And we'll get back to you as soon as we can on ESY questions. Great. Thank you, Dr. Holman. Uh, good evening, everyone. So as uh, Dr. Holman uh, and uh, Chair uh, Schleckman mentioned, I'll be presenting on the 2024 summer programming. Uh, so I'd like to start off by introducing our team. Um, so we have a few new team members this year. Michelle Crowley will be our uh, new math program coordinator, and Liz Farola uh, will be our new EA, ELA excuse me, program coordinator. And um, Carla Brusesi, who is our Director of Multilingual Learner Education, um, will be working together um, with another educator to run our summer MLL program. I'm very excited to be working with this team, and we've been doing some great planning uh, thus far. So our K-5 to summer learning program uh, is uh, funded through our Title I funding that the district receives. Um, and the selection process that our educators use this year to offer invitations included, including, includes the following. Um, so students who are currently receiving intervention services and also uh, students who were recommended uh, to <coughs> participate um, from their teachers are students who receive the invitation. Our K-5 Summer Literacy Program will run from July 9th through August 8th. And our program will take place three days during the week. And currently, we have 80 students who are registered to participate. And these are our educators who will be teaching in that program. Um, and the program will be prioritizing um, instruction that's centered around phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency, and reading comprehension. And our math program will also run the same dates. Currently, we have about 78 students who are registered. We are still uh, registering students every day. We haven't closed registration yet. Um, just because we want to make sure that we're serving as many students as possible who are interested in participating and able to participate. Um, and as I mentioned before, Michelle Crowley will be, excuse me, Crowley will be uh, coordinating that program and instruction will be centered around mathematical reasoning, language, fluency, and operational skills. 
our summer multilingual learner program uh, is uh, specifically offered to our newcomers in grades 1 through 12 and um, they will be um, working on academic language and content um, through uh, th thematic units and also they will be prioritizing instruction in nonfiction reading writing speaking and listening and that program is running from July 2nd through the 25th and we currently have about 35 students who are registered at our high school programming um, that will include a few different options. One is the open online courses where students will have an opportunity to participate in courses online. Some of the offerings include courses that are about an hour in length uh, each day over the course of six weeks and students can earn anywhere from 0.5 to 5 credits depending upon the courses. Uh, AHS will also offer an in-person credit recovery program. The program is designed as a five-week credit recovery program for AHS students, Middlesex League students, and Minutemen High School students who earn uh, failing grades in a required class during this current school year. And uh, there will be 15 in-person class sessions. Thank you. This just shares um, more information about the courses that will be offered. Um, and so for our extended school year program, our ESY program, um, that program will run between the dates of July 8th through August 15th. Um, and also we have two coordinators for that program. And um, that program will take place over the course of four different sites, Pierce, Monotony, Gibbs, and AHS. And finally, I'll share that we are updating our APS website to include elementary and secondary summer learning experiences and enrichment opportunities for students and families to access throughout the summer in order to um, try to prevent some of the summer uh, lost learning time that typically occurs every year. And uh, we are hoping to launch that during the last week of school um, in order to uh, provide extension opportunities for students and families. And I will take any questions. Terrific. Um, any members would like to ask questions of the summer pro uh, summer program? Ms. Morgan. Um, I, I don't know which of the which person this is for, but I think we. Am I right that at one point we were working on a partnership with community ed around some of the time, like, were we do like to sort of partner with them for some of the, the kids who are in some of this programming? Do we? Yeah. It might, I, okay, so, I, I feel good that you're nodding because yes. I'm like, I feel less crazy. Yes. <laughs> so uh, the, the summer fund program that ACE runs um, has options for classes that are enrichment classes in the morning and in the afternoon. We have, uh, so I can update a little bit on that. We've been running a couple of different options. One is for ESY students who have the morning sessions to go or be there. I'm not sure where they're exactly placing it, but to do the afternoon sessions at Audison uh, so that they have a full day set of programming. Um, another thing that we're doing and I and are continuing this year is that we've had um, a cohort of students from Boston who. Uh, yes. participate in summer fun as well and we do that um, at a, either it's either a significantly reduced or no cost we use um, funds from our Metco uh, dollars to do that and we're doing that again this year great thank you so much uh, mr. Cardin uh, thank you um, so thank you for including the information that you have about the ESY programs the numbers about how many were proposed and how many attended. Um, that's not something we've seen before. It's very interesting. Um, so one of the comments that I've heard from parents about the program is that, you know, four mornings a week, and, and for some, some of the students, it's not even the full morning. It's just a very inconvenient program. So I think <laughs> we have a lot on our plate. But, um, you know, the fact that, half, that less than half are attending is something that I think probably should be looked at at some point in the future. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Uh, Mr. Thielman. Did, well, Dr. Allison Hampy had her hand up first. Well, I okay. called on you. I'll oh. get to Dr. Allison Hampy right. next. Right. My question is, how do you recruit the students or identify the students for the ELL, for the language learners? Uh, so those are students that are newcomers. So um, 
if you're a newcomer, that's essentially the only criteria being used. Newcomer to Arlington at what point in time? Like before, like they're in the school district now or? <clears throat> no, not necessarily. And so meaning, um, do you have an answer for your like newcomers like, to the country? Like yeah. Yeah, right. I, yeah, I get that. <clears throat> Just like. Little timing. When do, you, when do you identify them? Like when do they find out about, how do they get, how do they know about the program and how do they? Well, so they found out about the program from our director who makes calls to actually introduce them to the program and also it's part of the Welcoming to Arlington, okay. um, excuse me, the Welcome to Arlington work that she does. Um, part of that includes if you're a newcomer to the country, a newcomer, um, you have that, that status and that automatically makes you um, able to participate in the program. So we, ha we, we have enough information to identify these students before the school year starts? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Dr. Allison Anthony. My question was somewhat similar to Mr. Carden, so I won't ask that one, but my other question, or actually not a question, but a comment was just, I noticed that the numbers um, enrolled for this year for almost all of the programs is significant, a significant increase from previous years, and I'm really pleased to see that. And I'm not sure if that's because other years, it's how many actually came, and so our, these numbers will drop, or if you've actually recruited and uh, we'll see a number, an increased number of students, which is what I'm hoping. So thanks. Okay, anything else? Um, I, I know that in the past we've had issues with getting the uh, ELL, um, English learner population up to speed within the summer program. Uh, part of that, I was told, was issues of recruiting staff, and I'm really, really heartened to see that we're uh, heading heading to a, a robust program this year without any angst uh, being displayed at this point in the school year. So th this is... Uh, can I also terrific report. Go ahead. Just also mention one other piece that I uh, didn't mention, um, particularly with um, the MLL program. So um, our director is working with our transportation department to try to make sure that we can provide buses. Well, it, it'll be just one bus, actually running a route to help um, make sure that kids are able to access the program. That's beautiful. We'll see. It's beautiful. Um, anything else under this agenda item? Hearing none, we'll go on to the next, which would be the first read on district goals for 24-25. Dr. Holman. Um, we met today in CIAA. Ms. Morgan, do you want to talk about our uh, Sure. We met earlier today um, and had a long conversation sort of going uh, goal by goal, piece by piece. Um, and we were able, those who were there, it, it was a bunch of us, Ms. Exton, Mr. Cardin, uh, Ms. Gilson, myself, uh, Mr. Schlickman, were there um, and uh, Dr. Ford Walker was there um, and we were able to go through them and provide some feedback um, which is not um, is not yet in what you're seeing tonight which right. is because we did it like two hours ago <laughs> um, so uh, I'm, I, I know that that will be incorporated the next time uh, when we read these at our next meeting so that's all I got excellent any other Questions, comments on, on the policy. Of course, this is a first read, and we will bring that back next time. I have a question. Go ahead. Um, I'm curious whether, so when we come back, I, I think the hope is that we do a first read tonight. We can come back to the next meeting at the beginning of June and have a final copy of these for approval, and then we'll be able to turn around and share them with educators and everybody as they plan and start to think about next year. And I guess I'm wondering what sort of format you'd like me to present them in or if you'd like me to present them publicly. I can create slides. I can open up the document and speak to it next time. But if there was a preference, I was curious. I'll leave that open to the committee's comments. Mr. Thielman looks like he wants to say something. <laughs> you, you're going to be making a presentation on this in one of our meetings. Is that, is that what you're saying? Or Yeah, I was. So if there are preferences regarding how I present this at the full meeting so that we, the public can I, see I, I it. would do a deck this. so that deck okay. highlights the top. I can yeah. do that. I, yeah, do a deck. I don't think it needs to be like okay. verbatim, word for word. But, yeah. Okay. And then... Throw some pictures in there. It's always good. Okay. 
A couple of. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm of that school. Uh, Ms. Morgan. And then they, they need to be on the website someplace. Yes, yeah. we'll make sure they're on the website. 23, 20, I couldn't find the 23, 24 ones, so, hmm. which is fine, but that's good. We'll both, but we get the 24, 25 ones because they're going to be fresh in 10 days. So, but it would be some, they need, yeah, we just want to make sure that they're searchable and probably on the say, also linked from the um, strategic plan yeah. page. They should be. Okay, so there'll be a slide deck for a brief presentation to the committee. We'll know what's in it because we've read them a few times and commented on them. There'll be a novice. Uh, so we should have a quick adoption at our next meeting on the 5th of June, which is a Wednesday. So uh, be there. Uh, Superintendent's updates. All right. Give me a second. Okay. So I want to start by sharing photos from a RISE showcase that took place at Middlesex Community College. Um, this past week, two of our students who participated in the Macy program, which Ms. Elmer has spoken about, um, and we've dedicated some resources to in budgets in recent years, it's the Massachusetts Inclusive Concurrent Enrollment Initiative, um, were recognized for their work in the program. Um, our student, Paul Conti, and his father were there, and Paul received recognition for the coursework he completed at uh, Middlesex Community College uh, for credit, Calc 1 and 2, as well as macroeconomics. Um, also recognized was our educational coach, Bridget, and our Macy coordinator, Annalise Abdelnoor. Um, the provost was there, as well as the dean of students, and spoke to program participants, uh, and the college president was also in attendance, so it was a very festive and exciting um, celebration. And that's the first picture that's on the slide. The second picture is from the Healthy Kids Healthy Program Summit, which was sponsored by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education um, and the John Stalker Institute of Food and Nutrition. The acting commissioner, Russell Johnson, recognized 48 school districts across the Commonwealth for their successful completion of the SWITCH Massachusetts School Wellness Coaching Program. And Arlington was one of those uh, districts that was honored and the folks who were able to be there to Receive the honor are pictured and are members of our wellness committee, Katie Martin, um, who's a Bishop School nurse, Kim Bisco, uh, who is our director of wellness, Denise Boucher, food services director, and Dorian Crow, director of nursing, um, are there in the picture. And I also want to note that there are members of our wellness committee who could not make it, including Jane Morgan. And we have this beautiful banner that's over here on the wall uh, that recognizes the work that we did to complete the school wellness coaching program, which resulted in um, some significantly revised policies that this committee has approved and that we have been working to make sure we are implementing faithfully. And so thank you all for your work doing that and it's wonderful to be recognized for it. Um, I also want to celebrate some exciting news in athletics. The Arlington <coughs> High School Unified Basketball season just wrapped up. It's, it's, it's the first season of Unified Basketball in the Arlington Public Schools, which is super exciting. They had a Hoopapalooza celebration this week. 11 teams from the Middlesex League enjoyed playing two games, um, followed by a pizza party to celebrate the end of the season. Our softball team won the Middlesex League Liberty Division Championship for the first time since 2018, and our girls outdoor track team came in second place by half a point at the Middlesex League Championship meet, which is the best finish they've ever had at the league meet. Um, I also wanted to share that we have had some red gem um, water damage and mitigation steps that we've needed to take at Arlington High School. This was discussed at a recent Arlington High School building committee meeting. Essentially what happened was that we had um, we had sump pumps installed outside of Downs during phase two construction to address some surface water and accommodate some roof, roof drain downspouts. And during the winter and spring of 24, the site had significantly raised groundwater levels because of heavy rain. And so we've done some supplemental waterproofing, uh, some, or Consigli has done some supplemental waterproofing, redirected surface water and roof drains to reduce the volume of water. But unfortunately, damage to the, there was significant damage to the wood gym floor during um, water being trapped underneath it during some of the flooding and that damage was permanent. So the gym floor, the wood floor has been removed and the red concrete floor, which is why it was called the red gym, it, it now remains there. Practices are still happening there, but we're working on adjusting game schedules uh, to account for the lack of regulation playing surfaces for games. Um, the facilities and athletic teams have been extremely patient, collaborative, and responsive in working out a plan for mitigating the disruption as well as our Middlesex colleagues in helping adjust some game schedules while we await the finishing of construction of phase three. So I just wanted to inform the committee about that. I think a lot of folks have seen that the floor has been taken up. 
in the red gym, um, and we've gotten some questions about it, so that's what's going on there. I'm happy to field any questions that folks have. And finally, uh, we'll be saying congratulations to the class of 2024 in the coming week. We will have awards night on Thursday, May 30th at 7 p.m. here at the high school, and then graduation on June 1st at 1 p.m. on Pierce Field. It's always a really exciting time to see our graduates uh, walk across the stage, and we're looking forward to it. Um, an update on administrative hiring searches quickly. We have an uh, ongoing search for the Audison Middle School assistant principal. The finals are next week. We have an ongoing search for Pierce assistant principal. We just had the finals this week and hope to make an announcement soon. Um, an ongoing search for K-12 director of history and social studies. Uh, and as well, actually, the K-12 director of ELA search is ongoing. It's, it's going now. It's not upcoming. Um, and as we learned this week, we will be doing a search for a new principal at the Audison Middle School, as Mr. Maringer has uh, informed us that he does not intend to return to Audison next year. And right now we've posted for an interim role, and I am weighing some options and thinking about thinking about things while I have some conversations with OMS staff and OMS families next week, and we'll use some of what I learn and what I hear about what folks are looking for and hoping will stay and hoping might need to be adjusted in order to make a decision about how best to move forward with that search. I'm happy to answer any questions about that. Um, your enrollments are in your materials. And in a message earlier today, I indicated that I was intending on adding a fourth section in first grade at Stratton due to the needs at first grade and the fact that we still have enrollments coming in and have gone over 71 uh, at that grade at that school at this point. Fourth grade. Mr. Carvin. Uh, just a comment. I just want to uh, thank um, uh, Dr. Homan and Mr. Bauer and whoever, everybody who was involved with the uh, unified basketball team. It's great. And we had mentioned it. I had brought it up a year ago or so, and I thought maybe it got dropped. But I'm thrilled to see that it started. Thanks. Yep. Ah, uh, Ms. Keith. I have one more kudos for you. Um, a couple of years ago, Dr. Homan introduced a Brandeis Teacher Leadership Program Fellowship for our staff, and our first cohort graduated last weekend. Oh, that's nice. That's great. <clears throat> Anyone else? Seeing none, uh, next uh, item is resolutions for submission to the MASC Delegate Assembly. We had those for first read at the last meeting. Uh, I welcome a motion to advance three resolutions for consideration by the Delegate Assembly in November. I, I, I move that we advance the resolutions to the Delegate Assembly. Second. Okay, motion by Mr. Thielman, second by, was that Ms. Morgan? It sure was. Okay, it's hard to tell. I mean, I can't see anybody here. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, we need to do a roll call. Dr. Allison Ampey? Yes. Uh, Ms. Exton? Yes. Mr. Cardin? Yes. Mr. Thielman? Yes. Ms. Skittleson? Yes. Ms. Morgan? Yes. And the chair votes in the affirmative. That's a 7 nothing vote. Next item of business will be first read uh, for several policies. Mr. Cardin. All right. So um, we have a bunch to walk through. Um, I'll start with file ACA um, that might have been already for a first read a different version but I'm not sure and it's changed so much that um, uh, I think it's worth calling this a first read so um, this is a result of the resolution that was passed almost a year ago by the school committee we adopted file, file ACAE but um, there was uh, a prior proposal of ACA that needed to go through council review um, after the council reviewed it and discussed it with Dr. Homan, uh, this is the revised version. Um, just some minor changes now. Considering that we have file ACAE with more detailed guidelines, um, this just basically references those guidelines. Uh, Mr. Chairman, do you want me to go? Do you want to take go a vote policy by policy? Going, or? And if okay. anybody wants to uh, stop, uh, we'll stop. All right, I will pause and see. No? All right. Next is BGB, um, uh, which I had presented and we had revert, referred to the policy subcommittee in March. Um, that's just to add our, pro our, our process about having a discussion, a first read like we are tonight, <laughs> and then a, a second meeting where we have an action item. 
uh, for changing policies, that is being modified to also apply to resolutions, except for the MASC resolutions, which we did do a first read on, but we don't have to under this policy if we decide not to in the future. But all other resolutions will be treated similar, similarly to policies and we require a first read unless there's a waiver of this policy um, as, as may be needed. All right, next is BDD. Um, we have an existing policy about our relationship with the superintendent. Um, and as I discussed in March, there were um, some suggestions from community members that there were findings of noncompliance that may or may not have been um, shared with us. So we um, uh, are adding language to this to ask the superintendent to share such findings in a timely fashion. Um, the language was modified um, significantly from what I had uh, originally written, but again, it went through. Uh, we actually had two councils review these, review these policies, um, uh, both uh, Katie Meinalt and um, Liz Valerio. Uh, and so this is the revised version. It still um, basically it keeps the intent of having the superintendent share with us findings of noncompliance. I think that uh, the superintendent pointed out in the committee meeting that this uh, aligns with current practice, so th th there's no, no big drastic change here. All right. Next is a new policy, um, IHBB child fine policy. Child fine is a, a federal law and there are also state regulations regarding it. Um, it requires um, public schools to um, to ensure that children with disabilities residing in the town um, who are in need of special education are evaluated and identified. Um, uh, again, there was, there was a suggestion from community members that we could be more visible about having this policy. We have a lot of policies in our policy manual that also um, echo state laws, state and federal laws, and this was one area where um, there was some uh, suggestion that this might be helpful. Uh, again, there was review and some revisions. The revisions are um, in the, if you, if you want to go back after tonight and look at them, they're in the policy subcommittee um, uh, novus items. Uh, again, there was uh, just some clarifications. The wording now tracks the statute a little bit more specifically. Um, uh, the uh, other item that changed was rather, you know, we, we generally are not, are not so prescriptive uh, in our policies as I originally proposed of saying an email must go out, you know, on such and such time of the year to parents. So um, we took that out and it's just, it needs to be included in the handbook, which is what we, um, we also review as a committee. And so that was a major change from the prior, po prior version of this policy and that is IHBB. All right, so the next one is um, new to anyone who wasn't at our policy subcommittee. Um, very briefly, the town of Arlington is applying to be a climate leader community, and as part of that, the town and the schools have to adopt a zero emission vehicle first policy, which basically says when we're buying a new vehicle, um, if, there's one, if there's a zero v emissions vehicle, available that meets our needs, we have to buy that vehicle. Um, heavy duty vehicles such as school buses are excluded. So for us, it would only apply to the SUV we have and um, possibly some of the smaller um, 10 passenger vans. Um, uh, so rather than adopting the whole policy, which is in Novus, um, the school committee, the school board has, the select board has not yet adopted that, but they will be. And uh, it was suggested at our meeting that we just um, modify our policy to reference that other policy. So that's what I did here with ECEV. Um, <clears throat> hopefully the select board will adopt that policy before we have this come to a second vote. Um, but that sort of depends on when our, whether or not we're having a second June meeting. So we'll work on that between now and our next meeting. Any questions? Questions or comments from the committee? Mr. Thielman. 
We, but you, you see, you're saying that we we can adopt opt to ECEV. E e I mean, it's it's pretty. We, we, yeah, we we we, could we can. I think it's a little awkward to adopt a reference to a policy that's not finalized yet. But we'll, you're, you're, I mean, it's it's close to final. So I, I agree with you. But we'll see what see how that goes. Okay. All right. Just just saying, we could probably. Yeah. I mean, ECEV already references the town sustainability. Yeah. Uh, Plan. So it's not that big a jump to go and include reference to, to the ZEV policy as well. It's just a matter of writing it properly to, to get it in. I'm sure that uh, well, once the select it. board gets it done, we'll be uh, we'll be right on board. We can. I mean, it's not. We yeah. can wait too. I don't know. Yeah. We have a very talented committee. Uh, any other comments on the? Um, uh, Policies for first read. Seeing none, we go to our beloved consent agenda, which has one item on it, so that uh, we could just do a motion of approving the minutes of May 9th, 2024. Motion by? So moved. Uh, Ms. Second. Morgan, second by? Second. Uh, Ms. Exton, so on the motion to approve the school committee meeting minutes of May 9th, 2024, roll call vote. Dr. Allison Ampey? Yes. Ms. Exton? Yes. Uh, Mr. Cardin? Yes. Mr. Thielman? Yes. Ms. Gittleson? Yes. Ms. Morgan? Yes. Chair votes in the affirmative. The um, minutes of the May 9th meeting are approved. Subcommittee liaison reports <coughs> and announcements. Budget. Dr. Allison Ampey? <coughs> Thank you. Just like some books. So we met on uh, May 15th. Um, we talked about the FY24 budget uh, the, and cleared up some questions that we had had before. Uh, we talked about the FY25 budget. Uh, we talked about planning for future meetings and including looking at rental fees and uh, what's included in the fee. When you pay for a fee, what are you getting with what you're paying? Um, and the transition plan for the new assistant superintendent of finance and operations will be coming in August 1st. Um, and some things that we'll follow up on in other meetings. So. Thank you. Thank you. Next would be community relations, Ms. Exton. Uh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> we are currently looking for people, community members who would be interested in participating in the Arlington High School Naming Advisory Panel. Um, if you are interested in participating, you can email um, a letter of interest to Ms. Diggins by Tuesday, May 28th at 4 p.m. Uh, the subcommittee will be meeting on Monday, June 3rd to go through those. Um, interested uh, parties on Thursday June 6 we are meeting again to discuss um, <clears throat> possible adjustments um, to the buffer zone and plan for how to communicate and get information um, out to the community about that conversation and there was a chat held on Tuesday uh, that Mr. Schlickman and Mr. Cardin hosted and the notes about that are in <coughs> Nova. Cardin, would you like to comment on the chat? Um, not really. There was uh, a little bit of a problem starting the meeting. I don't know if anybody um, left frustrated, but we did have one person join us. Um, again, it, it was a situation where she was just interested in hearing what was going on rather than having any specific concerns herself. So, okay. uh, CIAA. Uh, we met today. We talked about the goals as uh, mentioned earlier, and we do not have another meeting planned at this time. Facilities, Mr. Thielman. We meet on Tuesday, June 11th at 4 p.m. And uh, I'm, gonna, I have a, I'm gonna circulate a draft agenda to a few folks to get their feedback, and then I'll get the final agenda out mm -hmm. soon. Policies and procedures, I guess we've uh, exhausted that, right? <clears throat> yes, the only other item is, um, as Mr. Shuckman pointed out, our policy manual requires us to review the policies every certain number of years, so we will be doing that even though, um, you know, we, we totally revised them uh, four or five years ago, so we don't anticipate major changes, but um, we'll probably start with the more 
interesting parts like J or I. So if there's some section that you're more interested in than others, please let me know. Thanks. It's like Torah study, only you're shuffling the charges. <laughs> right. Uh, Dr. Allison. <laughs> okay, Dr. Allison Ampey. Oh, sorry. Up and out yep, by all means. You. Yeah, Dr. Allison Ampey. Thanks. Um, I just wanted to point out that I think the new, when we move to the online manual, a lot of the policies don't have the date updated on them anymore. We lost that. And I think as we go through, we should make sure that there is a date updated. Um, that's captured on the policy so we can keep track. That's certainly appropriate. And there's some of those policies that require uh, to be refreshed or reviewed on a regular basis. So having them dated is important for compliance purposes. Uh, Ms. Morgan. Um, when, I, I can't remember when this came up, but a review of the buffer zone policy in conjunction, if we're gonna look at right. buffer zones, that policy probably needs a, a, a relook to line it. So thank you. <clears throat> um, Arlington High School Building Committee, Mr. Thielman. The um, order of conditions extending uh, for, for the next th for three more years was signed uh, today by the town manager, and um, we're moving along. Project is going along fine. Uh, Dr. Homan talked about the uh, water issue in the Red Gym. That does not impact the new school at all, uh, but it does impact the current school. What is a, an order of conditions? Well, that's what the conservation gives you to allow you to keep working. <clears throat> uh -huh, okay. okay. And it um, and it also uh, specifically allows Arlington High School uh, or the town of Arlington to purchase uh, artificial turf if okay. for a new field. Fine. Uh, liaison reports. Any liaison reports? Any announcements? Future agenda items on our next meeting, which is June fifth. Uh, a Wednesday, everybody noticed, uh, we're going to have to deal with the, the resignation of the school physician, which is one of those positions that we vote. Uh, we now have an ML PAC subcommittee, uh, which will operate just like the uh, SPED PAC, so that we're going to need to uh, appoint a school committee member as a liaison to, uh, to the ML PAC. Uh, we have a, we're going to talk about summer meeting schedule. Now, I don't know if we're going to complete all our business for the year on June 5th or we're going to need to continue to June 20th, but I would anticipate that we will probably need to have some sort of a business meeting to dot I's, cross T's, and make sure we're good to go for the school year sometime over the summer. So. Uh, Ms. Diggins has asked everybody for their vacation schedule, so we'll know when everybody's in town. Please make sure if she doesn't have it, she, that she does have that. Uh, also, the question of a retreat has been brought to my attention, that uh, the committee may choose to do that either in the summer or in the early fall. Um, so if you're interested in, in this, uh, please, let me know and uh, we'll uh, move forward to schedule that if, uh, if there's interest from the committee. I think it would be an excellent idea. We haven't done one in a while and we've had some membership changes. Uh, Dr. Allison Ampey, do you want to comment on that? No, I was just, I agree that that would be a good idea and have some ideas for what might be nice to talk about. Uh, Superintendent Homan. For what it's worth, I agree as well. Okay. You're part of the team on this. We need uh, the superintendent and the school committee together uh, as a working team, and these uh, retreats tend to do that. Uh, and I think that we're going to need to take a little look at file JIB, which deals with our relationship with our student reps, because I think that we are in a situation uh, just like every other school committee in the state where we're not 100% conforming to state law, and we have to think about that a little. Um, Anything else? Anything uh, else that people want to put in for future agenda items? Seeing none, I will entertain a uh, motion to adjourn. So, so moved. moved. Ah, I, I'm glad somebody <laughs> wants to. Uh, motion by Mr. Cardin, second by Ms. Gittleson to adjourn. Roll call vote, Dr. Allison Ampey. Yes. Uh, Ms. Exton. Yes. Uh, Mr. Cardin. Yes. Mr. Thielman. Yes. Ms. Gittleson. Yes. 
Ms. Morgan. Yes. Chair votes in the affirmative. We are adjourned at 727 p.m. Thank you very much. No Celtics. Yes. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.